Got a lot of questions coming out of Monday Night Raw tonight. Question number one. Not even doing my usual open, because you all already know to subscribe. You know to subscribe and hit the bell and all that. Thank you for tuning into this video. I hope you enjoy this raw review. But question number one. Why did we have to see the United States title on the line tonight? Why couldn't this be been built up to a pay-per-view? Why couldn't this been built up to backlash? See some promos. See Finn ba see Vince McMahon building up Austin Theory. See Vince McMahon building up Austin Theory backstage leading up to the match that is scheduled at WrestleMania Backlash. Why? Why couldn't we see Austin Theory and Finn Bauer fighting backstage? These guys have been wrestling inside the squared circle for quite some time, back and forth. Now we're going to have to see it again. Austin Theory is the United States champion. He won the title. I'm not complaining about him being the United States champion. Don't get me wrong. I am a fan of Austin Theory. Anybody who has watched this channel for any length of time knows that I'm a fan of Austin Theory. But him winning the United States title tonight at a random Monday Night Raw in Buffalo, New York, it's just a bad place for him to win the title. Barely got any reaction at all. Now, they could have done this at Backlash, had all the heels come out, get him up on his shoulder, get them, get Austin Theory up on their shoulders, and Vince McMahon come out, raise his hand, and take the selfies with him. If you ask me, that would have been a better moment for the title change. Y'all let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. Now, Damian Priest, Edge, and AJ Styles. What's AJ Styles' judgment day? We'll find out at WrestleMania Backlash. They were not specific of what type of match Edge and AJ Styles was going to have. We know they're going to have one. Challenge was accepted, and then the lights started flickering, and... Um, Edge and Damian Priest attacked uh, AJ Styles in the backstage uh, in the locker room. But uh, I really like this pairing of uh, Edge and Damian Priest. I don't know about you, you all, but this this new pairing of them and uh, Edge kind of taking Damian Priest under his wing. I kind of like what they're doing with it because, quite frankly, a lot of times. You know, when a, a wrestler drops a title, they get pushed down. They either get pushed down to the lower mid card or to the mid card, or they kind of flounder around, or they uh, get pushed to the main event scene. I'm glad they took Damian Priest and they put him with Edge, and he's moving on and he's doing something important because, quite frankly, uh, he did a good job for what he was given with the United States title. And uh, this inner, he took that inner kind of Hulk type thing that Vince McMahon uh, <laughs> had him do, which <laughs> made it really cheesy, you know, that got him disqualified and all that and did all that criticism. You know, he took that and ran with it. You know, I thought he did a pretty good job with it, but I'm glad that WWE did not just push him down to the gutter after he 
lost the United States title. Because I think Damian Priest is a really good, uh, one of the better uh, superstars they have on Monday Night Raw right now. So I'm glad they're doing something with him. Now, let's move on to the fact that the Street Profits beat RK Bro tonight. I mean, it's good they got a victory. Does it mean anything? No. It doesn't mean Jack. It does not mean one thing that they won tonight. Because they will go nowhere with it. Nowhere. They, they won't go anywhere with it. As a matter of fact, you know, they're having this title unification matchup. And the Usos are going to win. And if you ask me, this is the writing on the wall. And I don't want to see them break up because they make a good tag team. But this is WWE's writing on the wall to break up RK Bro. It is. Usos win the tag titles, makes Roman Reigns and the Bloodline and the Tribal Chief and all this stuff stronger over on SmackDown. And what's it do over on Monday Night Raw? Well, number one, <laughs> yeah, I guess Roman Reigns and the Usos can go back and forth, but RK Bro. Randy Orton turns on Riddle. Sets up for Money in the Bank and SummerSlam. Two, two stadium shows back to back WWE's having. Both in July. Both in July. You don't think they don't they want you don't think they would want a riddle versus Randy Orton match at at least one of those come on this would be their way of doing this can see it happening wrestling fans can see it happen now let's move on to the fact that we had to sit through like 15 minutes of a marriage of all the people in 24 7 uh, segments. And after they got married, they didn't care about it. They just went after the 24 7 title, which we all knew they were going to because they had the 24 7 title out there. And yeah. There you go. This could have been, this time could have been given to something else. Uh, 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 another match split up between matches. This time could have been given to the women's tag team title matchup. Quite frankly, that was given little to zero time. They spent more time on this 24-7 uh, segment than they did the women's tag team titles. That's sad. That is sad. Speaking of the women's tag team titles, Rhea Ripley turned heel tonight. She turned heel tonight by attacking Liv Morgan. The biggest thing that comes out of that is, okay, well, hopefully uh, Rhea Ripley gets a, a decent push from this. And I hate the fact that Liv Morgan continues to be the recipient of this type of garbage. I, I, I really do. Because she she went through all that stuff at the end of the year and then in January where she got so close but so far in that rivalry with Becky Lynch. And ever since then, it's just been nothing. Absolutely nothing. Nothing. It's a shame. Absolute 100% a shame. 
I'll tell you something else that's scratching my head, and that's the fact that uh, we're past WrestleMania now, and we haven't seen Alexa Bliss since, uh, oh, I don't know, February? Yeah, that scratches my head. Uh, is she going to come back soon? I guess we'll find out. If not, what was the point in all those uh, therapy segments that she had leading into the Elimination Chamber uh, event? Now, let's move on to... <laughs> and Bobby Lashley. Listen. I want everybody to know right now that and we all are pretty much in agreement that the Omos thing, the Omos experiment is a failure. He's been knocked off his feet. He's lost. It doesn't matter if they pair him with MVP. Or in this case, MVP is playing the role of Harvey Whippleman. Yes, he's playing the role of Harvey Whippleman because Omos is nothing more than the great Kali Giant Gonzalez, I mean, Giant Gonzalez 2.0. And I'm just going to be honest, I'd rather have seen an arm wrestling matchup uh, at Backlash than what we're probably going to see, and that is a rematch of what we saw at WrestleMania. Whatever. Whatever is the case. All I know is wrestling fans, Omos is a dead experiment. We all know this. Let's move on, WWE, to something more important. To something more important. Give Bobby Lashley something more important to do. And outside of that, not too much happened on Monday Night Raw. Cody Rhodes beat Kevin Owens. Promises to be a good matchup, Kevin, I mean, uh, Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins at Backlash. They're doing a, a pretty good job building up to it um, so far. But let me know what you're thinking in the comments below. Subscribe to the channel today. Hit the bell. And until I see you again, this is Webby, and I'll catch all of you on the other side. Talk to you later.